Hey everybody, welcome to today's vlog. Today we are going to talk about how to retire at 36. Uh, we are also going to talk and assume in this uh, video that you want to do that while making your uh, average American income of $30,000. Uh, so let's get started. Before we begin, I would really like uh, you guys to put a comment, like, and subscribe to this channel, uh, which is the financial vlog. It really helps me out and in continuing to make these videos. So let's get started. Make sure to subscribe. Okay, so what is the plan? So the plan is you have income of $30,000 a year, which is the average uh, American income. Now, let us say you are 18 years old when we are uh, when we are beginning beginning this, right? Now, this means that you are if you have thirty thousand dollars in income uh, a year income, that means your monthly income is two thousand five hundred dollars before taxes. That means uh, if you're paying in American income tax standards around 12% tax which is around $2,200 a month income okay so and let's say you are 18 years old right let me write you are 18 years old now you may be of a different age and this video can still apply to you you will just have to calculate accordingly okay so now we are going to talk about what rent etc the expenses you may be doing now suggestion is you in order to achieve the retirement at 36 you try to rent a place which is six hundred dollars or less right now this can be very well achieved uh, but there are certain restrictions you will have to follow uh, strictly and with discipline in the beginning so let's say you are you choose let's say rent a room in a house or go for a smaller house or a cheaper rental where you do not spend anything more than six hundred dollars a year so that's what the rent you will choose right now let's say you have a car i'm being a little liberal in car loan you do not have to go this high but let us say car loan maintenance expenses etc is around three hundred dollars so uh, uh, three hundred dollars a month uh, your gas again car and gas i'm assuming you are going a little far from work but you need to keep your car loan plus gas expenses more or less around 500 dollars a month now your food etc uh, the budgeting needs to be done to be 300 dollars a month you have some emergency fund for any kind of special emergency etc we need to keep it at 200 dollars a month now if you can do this and this is what your broad expenses are this gives you around six hundred dollars a month available for investing now you are 18 years old right now right for for assumption of this video and you are able to save six hundred dollars every month right now this six hundred dollars every month can turn to um, let us say uh, six hundred into 12 so you will be able to save around seven thousand two hundred dollars a year if you follow this plan now let us say what do we do with this seven thousand two hundred dollars so when you're beginning when you're just 18 years old this is your age you have zero dollars because you have just begun right the next year you have saved seven thousand two hundred dollars now the idea is you invest this seven thousand two hundred dollars at a four percent interest rate i'll tell you how to do that for example if you put money in certain banks these banks give you in the range of two to three percent interest now we want slightly more we want around four percent of interest which will give you around 288 dollars per year on this seven thousand two hundred dollars so what you should do is you should invest in stock market and get stable long-term return companies let's say you invest in duke 
uh, energy as a Duke Electricity Company, it gives you more or less 4% a year. So you get 4% returns on this money, right? So at the end of your 19th year, you will have 7,200 saved. Uh, uh, 7200 saved at the beginning of 19th year because you see, start saving 80, at 18th year and at the end of 19th year you will have around 288 dollars uh, received in the interest so so on you keep saving it so at the end of 20th year you will have 7200 dollars additional obtained plus 576 dollars in interest uh, uh, so you add that 7200 dollar to this uh, uh, earlier $7,288 and then you have $14,400 saved. Now the interest on this $14,400 is going to be $576 and so on. So if we calculate year by year, on 21st year you will have $21,000 saved roughly $21,888. On 22nd you will have $29,664 and so on. And if I keep calculating till here, uh, right, 23rd you will have $37,000 approximately on 25th year you will have $54,000 and if we go all the way till the end and if we count till 35 you have $162,000 saved right now if I take one more year and if I go to 36th year which is our target you are going to have $175,000 saved that means at 4% return, you will get $7,000 every year as an income, which comes to around $586 a month. Now, this establishes that how you will spend your money and how you will generate the income from the saved money uh, on a perpetual or long term basis. Now, we know that there is going to be some risk, but again, that is the most practical way, which I would suggest to proceed by right i mean the company or the stock i said instead of duke you can choose some other stock whichever you find more appropriate but the idea is to get somewhere around four percent of income on this kind of saving right uh, so now we based on what you just saw our income every month is going to be 586 dollars now how do we retire in this this income so the idea is um, to retire instead of to retire in US, you retire abroad. That is, you retire in some place, let's say, uh, uh, Roma Norte, Mexico City or, or somewhere in Mexico City where it's easy to uh, come and go from US. Now, if you live in US and you are a US citizen, uh, usually you you are allowed to be in Mexico for around 180 days at a time I guess after that you have to leave and I understand it should allow you to re-enter the Mexico City again after staying some time back in USA but the idea is to stay as long as you can in a Mex uh, you know Mexico or Mexico City now try to google this place try to understand how these dynamics are but it is understood that it is it has fair lifestyle, European-like infrastructure, and uh, it's a pretty decent place to live with relatively decent weather, right? And uh, relatively affordable place. So now, if we try to gauge that how affordable it is, or you know how the how the dynamics work, here here is some example I've prepared for you. So let's say if at 36 you rent a room in a shared apartment now i understand you might have a partner by then but then the idea is your partner has followed similar plan or you can follow similar plans together right so you rent a room in a shared apartment which will cost you around 166 dollars a month uh, your food is around 150 dollars a month and i'm going super liberal over here right you can have really happy life in this $150 if you spend for food in a country of Mexico. Your water water charges are going to be around $18 a month. Your gas or basically your propane charges are going to be around $45 a month. Your electricity is going to be, it's highly subsidized in Mexico, so it's going to be around $3 a month. Your internet is going to be around $28 a month. So 
other thing what you can do is you're basically your emergency savings or you can start reinvesting which would be around 150 dollars a month and that means that uh, your total expense is around 560 560 dollars a month against your income of 586 dollars a month now this is one example you can find other places to live as per your liking uh, now note that you will have to you, you will only be allowed to stay in this country for maximum of 180 days at a time so you will likely have to come back to us and probably go to uh, you know stay there for some time and then go back uh, you you do need to keep that in mind so you probably want to stay somewhere where you can easily cross to mexico in uh, from us right and other thing which you want to keep in mind is your stay here in mexico doesn't need to be uh, just at one place what you can try to do is you can try to identify instead of just mexico you can try to identify two countries and six months you live in one country six months you live in another or six months you live in mexico come back to us for some time and then go back again for six months right so the this what whatever presentation is there today is kind of a guideline it gives you an idea and then you can try to work around it see how suitable it is for you and plan accordingly also the income plan which i mentioned on you know investing in stocks etc note that they are not risk free but again i mean it it gives you an idea on how you can plan around it and how you can work with it now i know that everything what i said it includes certain uh, points to note it basically it assumes that uh, you have no expense for kids or uh, no kids if you have partner they have similar plan or similar income so you know if you guys are together at early age or of 18 and you guys can work out a plan to you know achieve this together that would be wonderful for you and other thing it this assumes is you are okay to retire abroad at the age of 36 and you enjoy the food weather and culture of the places which you have found now mexico is just one example which you can look at there are more other countries in south america or if you go to asia etc which can also be considered of course you need to consider the uh, airfare expenses etc uh, this plan of income plan which you know which is listed here you can uh, try to play around with it see how it works for you better if you have it's and this assumes just 30,000 income so you, you may be able to increase your income sources a little bit in order to retire early or you know work work it out with partner or try to in, invest in something which gives you relatively higher return but safer so there are variables which you can play around and try to work on it but I hope you, this gives you a fair idea on how you can try to achieve retirement at 36 even while earning the average US income which was 30,000 right so I hope this was helpful to you um, as a disclaimer I'm not a certified financial advisor this is uh, basically just my personal view uh, consult a certified financial advisor take this with a grain of salt make sure uh, uh, you invest at your own risk uh, and I, 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 I hope uh, if this was of any help to you once again like and subscribe uh, to my channel it really helps me out in making this videos uh, and i hope to see you guys again soon have a great day bye, -bye.